Weird start to a pro team journal right now. It's a good bite. Something's gonna happen. <laughs> Something way different today on Pro Team Journal. All of the smallmouth shows that we've done on the Great Lakes, it, this lake that we're headed to, Lake Huron, I feel like we've ignored something. We've ignored Mr. Largemouth. We're not gonna ignore our friend, Mr. Largemouth. And here's the weird thing. We're fishing the Great Lakes, Lake Huron today. Not a single spinning rod in the boat. Straight braid, straight braid, let's go. When you go to the Great Lakes and it's blowing, make sure you always have a couple flipping sticks. Always have a couple flipping sticks, about a hundred rage bugs, a hundred rage menaces, and if it's gassing, go largemouth fishing. It could be the best day of your lifetime. You know, in all honesty, Lake Michigan to Huron, where we're at, Detroit River into Erie, all the way to Ontario, it's world, world-class bass fishing. World-class fishing. And what's funny is, and I think you're gonna see this today at some time, we're gonna bounce around, whether it's in some of the tributaries, some of the rivers, out into the bay, is how much it does not look like the Great Lakes shows that we have taped on Protein Journal in the past. It's going to, somewhere in this show, look just like Florida-style fishing. That was a good bite. Ain't a big one, but it's a start. But what I'm seeing, we're gonna give this, we're in one of the rivers right now of Saginaw. We're gonna give this a couple minutes and we might just roll up way out on the bay. Stay hooked. I thought he was a lot bigger, a lot bigger. <laughs> Got the fish scared the crap out of me. Weird start to a pro team journal right now. It's a good bite. You know, when we started this show, when we started this show, we had a couple blow ups and, and missed one or two. God, he come off. Was not ready for that. And I looked at the crew and I said, man, let's, let's get out there. Let's go in Saginaw Bay. This is what Saginaw Bay looks like. Like, look at that right there. The rest of the day is going to be very, very target rich. Okay, let's start the show off, please. Not a big one. This is not protein journal worthy yet. The two main weapons in this show were a Strike King Rage Bug and a Strike King Menace. And the, the, the thing about those two baits, they're very, very, very compact, okay? They will get through that grass, whether it's the Phragmite, whether it's cattails, whether it's, you know, matted, cut up grass, it will penetrate through there. The other thing, you know, with, with the, the, the Rage Bug and the Menace, 
I was using a, a tour grade three quarter ounce tungsten weight. That it's a heavy weight. You don't want to go real big here. You don't want to go ounce, ounce and a half because you're only this deep. You know, I, I had a, a two by four block under my trolling motor mount really the entire show. As shallow where that we were fishing, it was relative because it was the deepest water that those bass had access to. 60 miles of this kind of cover, of all this. I mean, everything looks target rich. We're gonna get in a stretch where it's gonna go down. You just gotta keep your head down and go. He is on. He is on. comment this morning go until you collide it's the first decent not a big one decent bite of the day let's go lg leaving out the f <laughs> You know, when you're fishing stuff like this, you're tangling in, in the jungle. Phragmite is a lot different from reeds and cattails. Doesn't look like the Great Lakes. It doesn't look like Michigan. It looks like, you know, Okeechobee or, or it looks like Venice, Louisiana. It does not look like you're in Saginaw Bay, Michigan. Two years ago, this was all water. It was three feet higher. This, this year, it's basically three feet down. And what that does more than anything is condense, potentially condense, an undescribable amount of bass in one confined area. And that's what we were hunting for in this show. Stay hooked. Stay hooked up. That's why we're doing this, dude. That's why we're doing this, right? Starting to see what they're on. They're on every little point, every little point. Get in here. how clean that fish is. It's like fish has not seen man. Boy, it took a while. I think we're on them now. You know, the, the other thing about this show is, it, this is a throwback show. When you come to Saginaw Bay, you don't need all your Star Wars electronics and Mega Lives 360s and satellites and contacting ET. It just, turn your map on, don't hit a big rock. You don't need a depth finder. Your depth finder is your Greg Hackney flipping stick, <laughs> right? If it's that deep, you're good. Stay hooked up. That's a good one. Slowly, slowly, slowly getting somewhere. for a pound and a half fish. My God, they are in just nothing water. There he is. <sighs> yeah, man. 
That is so incredible. We have looked all day long for this man. Gosh. <laughs> Fun day, man. How many are we around right now? There's no telling. We taped a lot of shows on Gunnersville, punching grass, and my camera guys would hate it because it's slow, 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 and then it's just complete fireworks go off when you swat on one. And we've always said it, we, we've called it tragic to magic whenever you do a flipping show, and that's exactly what today's been. Day number two, Pro Team Journal. If you look at yesterday, some touchdowns, there was a few interceptions, but we had never collided until the last hour of daylight. And, and when, when I say we collided, we found them. And on Pro Team Journal, we ain't going home, <laughs> no. Great bite. They're everywhere. I want to grab the flipping stick, but I want to just, I got to throw a pad perch just to get the poison out this morning. If you can't tell, Brandon, I want to catch them all today. I don't care the size. They're home. They're home. That's a better one. Comparatively. Got it. I feel like a kid right now. You pitch your bait in there and all the grass starts shaking, there are no words. It almost looked like it was windy, and it wasn't. It was how many fish were in there, when, like you would just see the, the grass just start shaking. And it wasn't in a little area, it was in a 50 yard stretch where the whole thing was shaking. Where I, I looked at cameraman Brandon, I'm like, you have no idea what's fixing to happen. <laughs> We're getting our number quote up. There's a fish every 10 feet right now. to go in deep to get them, the ones that we're after.
Look at that, top dead center. That worked out perfect. Get that fish off in two years. Got it. Nice little chunk. They're everywhere. God. God, he's a gangly one. I feel like I'm gonna lob in here and all hell's gonna break loose. Like that is seriously where I'm pitching right there, maybe eight inches of water. He's got it. Nice one. Seriously, if you look right there where I'm casting, it is not a foot of water. That's a whole chunk. I'm dead serious. There was 500 bass in that patch of grass. There is no doubt in my mind. We ended up catching probably 50. I have no idea how many are sitting in there right now. Now granted, a couple of them have punch holes in their face. That is like the best feeling though. When you pitch your bait in and you see that grass just go and you and it's locked. That is the best feeling on earth. A lot of people ask me, why do you fish? What, what are you chasing? And I remember when I was a kid and you'd get on a school of bass, whether they were a half dozen bass or, or you know, 20 bass, I always chased that feeling of, of when I was a little dude and you'd find them. That happened in this show, that happened. Wow. Like uh, it's getting bit every time I drop it in right now. He's got it. Something's coming in. It's all two pounders, man. I'll tell you one thing I've never seen in my lifetime, this many fish condensed in a 70 yard stretch, ever, ever. What, I have no idea, to be honest, I have no idea. Like, we should probably leave and go try to catch a giant, but there is no way I'm leaving this. If, if you're somebody that flips, this is, uh, like in all honesty, this is, uh, I'm shaking. <laughs> we have not caught a giant. We've just caught some nice chunks, but I, I don't know what's going on inexplainable it, it's inexplainable to have a 50 yard stretch that has hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of bass it's almost monotonous how many condense into a small area this is like national geographic how many are around us right now like you would drop in and be like there is no way there's any more left and then you'd catch another 10 of them You know what, in all honesty, thanks for coming to the Great Lakes Largemouth Fishing. I am done. There's so many. It's awesome to go to places like Texas, Alabama, and Florida and chase giants. If you wanna chase insane largemouth numbers, I know the Great Lakes are known for smallmouth. Don't underestimate Mr. Largemouth. Mr. Green Jeans lives here. You know, it, it got to the point, 
I'm not kidding, my ribs were bruised. Two words, we're done. D-U-N. Keep hunting, keep hunting. Next time on Pro Team Journal. Make sure I got extra blood today. <laughs> Zone one is filled with mosquitoes. So we're in South Louisiana this week. Zone one. Zone one is Strike King's regional breakdown of the United States. And zone one is basically the Gulf Coast. The exception of the very southern tip of Texas, which is still some Gulf Coast area too, but has some reservoirs in it. Most of zone one are brackish water, what I consider marsh fisheries, that are all connected to the Gulf of Mexico. That one didn't show itself. Ha ha! The elusive fall bass, zone one. The cool thing about Zone 1 is it's a target-rich environment. Probably, to me, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Cypress trees, a lot of matted vegetation, lily pads, grass, logs lay down. Everything that you would imagine a bass would live by. <laughs>